Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> So I'm super excited today. I have a very special <laughs> guest. Um, Jay is gonna help me today on the video. Hi. So, so since he's helping me, I let him pick what we're gonna make. What are we making? Today we're going to make some sort of chocolate dessert, like a chocolate brownie cake thing. That's really good. Yeah, where did we get the idea from? Um, from Carabas. Every time we go there, he orders it. I think it's called something like Chocolate Dream or, or something along those lines. I don't know, chocolate really good. Yeah. So yeah. I said we could make it since he's going to help me with the video. So we're going to make it. So part of it, oh, what's your favorite part about the dessert? Um, the brownie. Okay, good, because that's where we're going to start. So we're making a chocolate brownie. There's also whipped cream, right? Yes. Layers of whipped cream. And then there's um, chocolate mousse, and then some chocolate ganache drizzled, and it's kind of drizzled, and it's kind of like layered. So we're gonna start with one thing at a time. Um, we have a really easy um, brownie recipe that's really good. It's gonna be like a fudgy brownie. So what we have here, we have a half cup. Probably can't see that. It's a half cup of melted butter. You want to keep it warm. We have a cup and an eighth of sugar olive oil, eggs, two eggs, vanilla, all-purpose flour, cocoa, which AP. you'll see in a minute, that's right, AP, and some salt. So this is really easy, it happens fast. So first, get, I'm just doing a throwaway so we don't have to do dishes because normally Jay has to do dishes mm -hmm. and he doesn't like it. No. So, <laughs> throw away, grease it a little bit, get that ready, set your oven to it's 350. 350. You can feel it, it's warm. It is warm. It's a little warm. So the first thing that we're gonna do, make sure you have a whisk and a bowl, your hot butter, and then everything else all ready. Bowl, whisk. You don't need a mixer for this, so that's great too, because a lot of people don't have it, or you don't have to pull it out, which Jay also has to do for me. It's a pain in the butt. Over there. Yes. Okay. So you wanna pour the butter in the bowl? I do. So, all of it? Yep. So a half cup of butter, which is one stick, which is four ounces. Pour that in the bowl, you want it to be warm. A cup and an eighth of a cup of sugar. And then one, whoops, thank you sir. And then one tablespoon of olive oil or vegetable oil or whatever oil that you have. And we're gonna whisk that. Do you wanna mix it? You want me to do it? Yeah, just mix it up, whisk, whisk it. So the butter's warm, so it's gonna start um, Kind of melting the sugar a little bit, not fully, but it's yeah, it's, um, it's combining it. Um, so yep, mix it really good just to get it kind of all, all incorporated. Next, you're gonna add your two eggs. These are just large eggs. I cracked them just for ease of the video, but just pour them in there. Mix that together, please. Continue with yes, the whisking. Yes, please whisk it. Whisk it real good. Okay. <laughs> yep, <laughs> and then good job. Um, I'm going to add two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Please whisk that as well. It's in there, we promise. Keep mixing. Now this is, once you have that really well incorpor incorporated, sorry, you want all the eggs to be mixed in there so that when the brownie is baking, you're not going to get like yolky part here, egg white here. It's all going to be incorporated. So you want to mix it until it looks pretty consistent and like a yellow light color. So keep going for a minute. And the next step, um, about a minute. <laughs> next step is get a sifter, or this is just a strainer, but I use it as a sifter. It has holes in it. So you're going to combine the um, cocoa powder, the salt, which is just a fourth of a teaspoon, and the all-purpose flour. So if you want to go ahead and put that down, I'm just going to put this on the bowl. So this one that has the little lip is actually nice because it rests right on the bowl. I don't know if you can see that. Yep, yeah, that's the point. Cooking with vino, cooking with beer. Yeah, I hope this isn't against the rules. No, beer is fine. It's just have a good time, cook, have a drink, chill. So a half cup of all-purpose flour goes into the sifter. I'm not going to do anything yet. Half equal parts, so a half a cup of cocoa powder. This is unsweetened. If you have sweetened, it's fine. It's just going to be sweeter. Like me. 
Yep. And then you're gonna put a fourth of a tablespoon, sorry, of a teaspoon, just a little tiny bit of salt in the sifter. Do you know how you wanna do the sifting? Um, sure. Okay. So you just, you just pick it up and you hold it over the bowl oh. and you just sift it. Okay. If I can do it, you can do it. That's right, that's a good attitude. So you're just sifting it because cocoa powder gets really um, clumpy. All-purpose flour can be clumpy and you got the salt in there. So you're sifting it to make sure that you're getting it really light. Am I and, sifting it right? Yeah, you're doing a good job. And so that it's all incorporated evenly just like we did with the egg. So really messy. It's a little bit messy. If you hold it lower down into the bowl, yeah. Um, and then any parts that kind of stick or won't go through the fine mesh, just push through with your finger. It's just the mesh is going to break it up. So unless you see something weird like a hair or a fuzz, take that part out. But so see, there's a little, a couple little clumps. Let's see if you can see that. I don't know if you can. If you can, you literally just take your hand and smush it through, and you just kind of push it through. Cocoa gets a little bit messy, but it comes right off with water, so don't freak out. And you're not really having fun until you make a little bit of a mess. Depending on the salt that you use, it might be too big to get through. So once you get everything else through, you can just tap this over and dump it out. I just did. Okay. So then this is super easy. We're almost done. Just um, finish mixing oh, that. Man. Incorporate it just until it's mixed. You don't want to over mix it because it'll make a dry, chewy brownie. And we're going for like a fudgy, light, yummy brownie. So as soon as that's all incorporated together, then we're just going to pour it in our pan. We have our oven at 350 and it's going to bake. It's going to vary, but in about 20, 25 minutes, best way to tell is to take a toothpick or a knife or something kind of small that you can stick in the middle and pull straight out and you don't want any batter on it. It's getting everywhere. Jay's making a mess, but that's okay. You want me to finish? Sure. Okay. Give you a break. So you just want to make sure you get it all incorporated because otherwise you'll just have like chunks of cocoa or flour or whatever is all over. So it looks pretty thick and... Should we show them? Yeah, good idea. See? It's kind of hard to see, but I think you get the point. Ooh. So again, don't over mix. It looks all incorporated. So can you move that? Right here? here please. Yeah. So I put, since I'm using this, this is kind of flimsy, it's gonna do a great job, but I put a quarter of a sheet tray underneath it just so that it doesn't make a mess in the oven and so that it gives it a little bit of stability. But if you have an eight by an eight pan, um, definitely feel free to use that. That's what this is and it's gonna make a perfect base for our chocolate dream dessert thing that we're making. That. A little spatula to help you, and then you're just going to pour it into the pan. Dump it right in. That's right. It already smells good. I would probably just eat it like uh, this. Marley's coming over. Yes, Marley's coming to check it out. She smells it. Alright, so we're going to put this in the pan. We are going to bake it at 350. I'll check on it probably about 18 minutes just to know where it's going to be. So set a timer, don't forget it, but you'll definitely be able to smell it. And then we'll get on to the next part. So, Ooh, good part. Cheers. cheers. Welcome back. I got a new drink. Uh -huh. Now I'm Move officially a member of the team. Cooking with Dana, you forgot. It's okay. So we just pulled the brownies. They smell amazing. It's about 22 minutes, but your oven might be a little bit different, so test it. Um, if you want it to be more on the fudgy side, let it a little bit less in the oven, but anyways, so moving on to the next part, which is our chocolate mousse. Ooh. Yeah, so it, I'm kind of excited about this because I can explain it a few different things, which is kind of cool. He's normally behind the camera laughing at me. Anyways, first thing we're gonna do is make a ganache. So I have one and a third cups of milk, ganache. and I'm gonna turn this on the burner we want to get this boiling, right? In here, I have chocolate. I have 17 ounces of chocolate. Um, they're just like little discs. You can use, um, you can cut up like a bigger piece.
pieces of chocolate if you want. Um, Semi-sweet is good. Um, 17 ounces of this in a bowl that has preferably something like this where it's heat resistance because we're going to bring this to a boil, the milk, one and a third cup. We're going to pour it over and we're going to let it sit. Once we let it sit and it combines, you're making the ganache, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. So we're going to do that first. We'll bring the milk to a boil. You're going to want to have a thermometer if you have one because you're going to want to cool the ganache um, to about 90 degrees before you work with it. So anyways, boiling milk, chocolate's ready to be stirred in. Oh, we do need a spatula. And then something else I wanted to talk about is gelatin. So gelatin goes in mousse to create like the, to make it jelly, like gelatin. I don't really know how better to describe it. So you need to balloon the gelatin. So we had sheets and I hope I don't spill this everywhere I'm trying to show you, but I have ice water here and I have two sheets of gelatin. You can also use powder. It's blooming. It's like bringing it back to life. They're in there. I They're in there. Um, you want to do this for 15 to 20 minutes, ice water, and just let that chill. And then before we use it, I'll show you, but we're going to squeeze out all the excess water. So that's happening. Got the chocolate ready. We're going to bring this to a boil. And that's pretty much all of the mise-en-place that you need. We have, like I said, our brownies, which we can just kind of take to the side and cool now. It smells really good, so I'm going to hide it so Jay doesn't eat it. Okay, so we're the other part, which I don't know if you can see because the plug is back here, but I have my KitchenAid out, so I did lie. Yeah, we weren't supposed to get that, but... I forgot. We need a whipped cream because we're going to fold that in to finish the mousse. So, a little trick that I um, like to do is you have to get it as cold as possible. So keep the cream in the fridge until you need it. I also put the cup I'm going to pour the cream into as well as the whip attachment in the freezer. The coldest you can get it, the faster you'll whip your cream. So, just a little tip. Okay, so I see steam on the milk. Won't be much longer, and we're just gonna pour it in hot, let it sit for a minute, and then stir it in after a minute, and it will make a ganache. Cool. And then we're gonna add, squeeze out the water and add the gelatin in, and once you bloom it in the cold water, you have to melt it in something hot. And then that makes the mousse? That makes the chocolate ganache, ganache. the gelatin. The mousse is really when you fold in the whipped cream. Fold in? Yes. We get to fold something we in? We do. And if anyone has seen Shit's Creep, there's a great episode about folding in shredded cheese. I think they made enchiladas. I don't know. Yes. It's great. If you haven't watched the show, it's really funny. You should watch it. Are you having fun? I am. Thanks for having me. Sure, anytime. Um, so you do want to wait until it's boiling and it looks like it's about to be boiling. Obviously you'll see the bubbles. If you really want, you could stick your thermometer in there and check. Get in. <laughs> so it is at, it's going up. So we're gonna be, yeah, 205 now. So it's gonna be any second and you don't want it to um, boil over, boil like over on your stove. So you'll be fast about picking it up and then holding it over and you're just gonna pour it over your chocolate. I know you wanna stir it right away, but wait at least 30 seconds to a minute. So while that's happening, we can get our gelatin. So... You want me to move the camera down? No, so yeah, hold it oh. It's like jello. It's pliatin now, yeah. Pliatin. It's pliable now. Pliatin. So you want to squeeze all the water Word. out. Word. Oh. Squeeze all the excess water out. And you probably can't see that, but it looks just like little jelly sheets. So you're just going to drop it in there. And the heat is going to melt it, and that's going to gelatinize it, make uh -huh. it thick. And then the mousse, when we add it in a little bit, is going to help it make it light and airy. And together, it makes a mousse. Sweet. Yes. Mousse it up. So we'll let this sit another 20 seconds. We're going to stir it, and then I'll show you the consistency. Um, so if you were going to make a ganache to top a cake or fill a cake or top any sort of dessert, you just wouldn't add the gelatin. Just mix it, and your ganache is done. So you can basically do equal parts um, depending on your consistency that you want, chocolate and cream, or milk in this case. But we're going to add the heavy cream when we mix it. So, okay. 
It's been probably about a minute since it's been in there, I think. Ah, uh, give or take. Okay, so now you're just gonna start mixing it. Do you wanna lean the, go get the camera and lean sure. it down a little bit? So it kinda looks like hot chocolate right now. So again, two things are gonna happen here. It's gonna start thickening because of the gelatin. And as the chocolate melts, it's gonna emulsify and get thicker as well. So keep stirring it. And we're gonna let this cool down anyway. So stir it until it is at a really nice, even color and you don't feel any more lumps. And then you're gonna let it sit. And then we're going to whip the cream, but no need to do that yet because we do wanna cool this down to 90 degrees. So we're gonna mix this and let it cool. We'll move on to the next step. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome back. We each have new beverages, as you noticed. This is my third different beverage of this episode. So the last piece of this uh, mousse is our heavy cream made into whipped cream. So I just pulled this from the freezer. I put my container and my mixer in the freezer again it helps it stay really cold and whip so I'm just going to measure out two cups of the whipped cream and can you pour that in the bowl please the whole thing yep all yes two I cups. can if you had a metal mixing bowl you can also put that in the fridge or freezer just to get it extra cold again it helps it mix faster we have a glass one so going to want to do is mix that until it's medium peaks which just means you're going to whip it until it's no longer liquidy it's going to look like whipped cream and when you stick the whisk in and pull it out it's going to leave like little mountain peaks that's when you'll know you're at medium peaks and then you're going to take that chocolate mixture you made earlier and you're going to incorporate that in you're going to fold it in and that completes the chocolate mousse and then you're going to put that in the fridge and let that chill for a while, um, and then we'll assemble everything later. What we're gonna do, again, is more whipped cream. We'll do it in two batches, though, because we need this just for the ganache to make the mousse, and then we need whipped cream to finish the different layers, which is the brownies we made earlier, mm -hmm. the chocolate mousse we're making now, and then whipped cream, um, and then we can drizzle some chocolate on it, too. So, oh, yeah. this is going in the background. You'll want that to go, it might take or four minutes. It won't take that long because it's only two cups and it's nice and cold. And then we'll get on to the next part. Cheers. Okay guys, so a quick tip. So when you're incorporating mousse, you want to fold it in, but once you keep going, you're going to start deflating the mousse and losing the air, which is the whole point of a mousse. So I learned a good tip. So when you have some liquid like I do left and the cream you know, it's, it's mixed in, but you can still see some white specks. What you do is you take your spatula and you go up and down like this. So this is actually incorporating air into the mixture. So you're not deflating anything and your whisk is also breaking up the whipped cream or whatever else there. So you're not losing any volume at all or any air, you're actually adding some and you're using the I don't know what, exactly what the technical term for these are called, but the uh, springs, I don't know, whatever these little things are called, the tillers, I don't know what the hell they're called, but whatever they are, you're using those to break it up and you're adding volume. So don't overfold, fold less than you think and then go like this back and forth and you'll actually incorporate everything and you'll add air. Another, like if you're going to be doing whipped cream by hand, don't go in a circular motion. Do this too, and you'll actually whip the cream, adding air versus deflating it. So just a quick tip. Anyways, from this point, you're going to want to let this um, sit in the fridge and firm up. So cover it, put the plastic right on the surface of this, and put it in the fridge and let it set for at least 30 minutes to an hour so it looks like an actual mousse. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome back. Okay, so we are finishing everything up. 
We have our cute little brownie all cooled on a plate. We let our mousse, our chocolate mousse that we made earlier sit in the fridge for about an hour. And we are making some more whipped cream in the mixer, which again, what I did was I put in the mixer attachment, the whisk, and the bowl this time, even though it didn't really fit, in the freezer, kept the cream cold, and you just whisk it. It's gonna do its own thing, it'll take another minute. The way that they do it at, is it Bravas or? Uh -huh. Bravas. So the brownie goes first, and then it's a layer of the mousse. Can you actually um, get the camera and aim it down here? So you're gonna wanna put the mousse on, and this, my recipe made a lot of mousse, so, this will work. Um, keep going, keep going. I'm just helping you. There. So this is going to put a lot of mousse on here. So you can save this mousse. Um, use it for lots of different things. You could fill a cake. You can top a cake. You could just eat it with a spoon. Um, it's going to be really, really good. You can do this as thick as you want. Um, I'm just going to kind of smooth it on here. Um, I'll put a little bit more since we have so much and our whipped cream is almost done. That's going to go on top and then um, we are, at this point you can actually chill this if you want a definite layer between the mousse and the whipped cream. Um, but we're going to basically put this on, put the whipped cream on and then stick it in the fridge for at least an hour, two hours. You could do overnight so it really solidifies and then you'll really see the three different layers. We're going to put our whipped cream on kind of dollop it around. If you put more, um, then you can kind of spread it out without kind of making the two layers collide, if that makes sense. So whipped cream is going to whip, stick to the whipped cream or the other topping. So you just kind of smooth it out. And again, we're going to put this in the fridge for at least an hour. Um, so it will kind of harden up and really keep those layers separate. Um, and it'll be good cold. You could even, after it firms up, you could let it come to room temp a little bit if you want. Either way, it's going to be really good. So, let's cover it. If you have some chocolate sprinkles or shavings or chocolate sauce, you can finish that with it after, like, when you serve it, when you cut it to serve it. it might look a little gloppy now, but we'll take a picture later of the, of the final product. We're going to let it cool, and then I can kind of clean up the edges. Although we're just eating at home, so we don't really care if it's totally beautiful. We just want it to taste really good. But it will look pretty. We'll take a picture of the end result. And we'll show it for you. So at this point, just go ahead and stick it in the fridge. Um, at least a half hour, an hour until it firms up. And then you'll be ready to enjoy it. Cheers. Look at those layers. They look delicious. Mmm. Brownie is really fudgy, but it's kind of almost fudge light, like it's kind of dense in a good way. And then you get that chocolate mousse and then the whipped cream, and we put some chocolate on top too. It's amazing. You gotta try this. Cheers!